Good evening, everybody. It's Thursday. It's 8 p.m. It is time for Kitchen Party. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you need Jeff's voice. <laughs> kitchen Party is brought to you by Bakespace.com. You can visit the website for more information, recipes, and links to all of our past shows. At Bakespace.com, you'll also find our iPad app, Cookbook Cafe, that allows you or your organization to create and sell an e-cookbook containing all your favorite recipes. But now, it's time to get the kitchen party started, so here is founder and CEO of Bakespace.com, Lebecca Pye. Hello, America. Hello, everyone. Okay, two things. Oh, see, this is this is an example of where I've lost my mind this week. <laughs> two, two things. things. <laughs> um, I have decided to start with heavy drinking this evening, which is uh, I'm doing uh, Macallan 15. On, well, I don't even have the rocks. I don't even have ice. I don't even have ice. So I put a little forgot splash of. I, I put a little. Yeah, I forgot the recipe. Um, I put a little splash of water just so I'm not crazy drunk. Um, but I've had a cold since I got back from South by Southwest, and I. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm saying. So I apologize in advance for anyone watching the show tonight. I may be a little crazy. It's going to be the uh, best kitchen party yet. <laughs> and I think or it's the shortest. It's <laughs> very true. I think it's also because spring just hit, and so all my sinuses and my allergies. Yeah. Are you guys having that too? Yeah, me yeah. too, yeah. Definitely. So D Douglas, is your garden like going crazy? Um, actually, this is the wind down time where we out here in California, you grow during the winter of all things. I get nasty notes from people back in Ohio. How can you be growing that already? Um, but yeah, we're actually starting to wind down. I actually was out in the garden filming a video today. I planted four new plants, uh, shade plants in the backyard and recorded a video of that and everything else. So I, w I was busy, but the garden is finishing up. The bulbs or the daffodils are blooming. Uh, they're usually our last bulbs. Uh, some amaryllis come up later, but that's pretty much it. You know, so we have I want a, you to tweet oh. that out with the kitchen party link. I think a lot of people would like to see your yard. I know I would. Oh, oh yeah. I, I'm so embarrassed. It looks great on video, but boy, you see it up close. It's like, oh, gee. Because <laughs> I, I can focus on what I show on the video. You know, but you walk in the backyard, it's like kind of brown back here, isn't it? Right but that, that's you know, part of being a gardener. You did bring up a good point, though. You said um, in California, because, you know, obviously I'm in LA too, that you grow in the winter. I think that's where the mistake. I made. <laughs> I think, I think we, we should take me back to like December and I think that's why none of my grass ever grows because I'm like, it's June, let's do this thing. Well, growing grass is never a good idea in Los Angeles anyway and uh, okay, okay, get the dog, get the dog. Hey boy. Here boy, here boy. I had to do it. I we 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 heard the dog during the pre-show so I had to, had to say hello He's, puppy. He'll be coming by. Aw, can you pick him up? Yeah, let me grab him, actually. He's just standing there barking it's a, at me. It's a Labrador. She's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you you <laughs> oh, there you go. Wait. And welcome to the pet portion of our show this evening. <laughs> and do so, do Hello, everyone. what sort of veggie treats does your puppy like? <laughs> he actually so, loves vegetables. Shake. Shake. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> is, that your, is that your intern? For your he's my. He's um. Yeah, well, he's no. He's more like my my kitchen cleaning assistant because anything <laughs> yes. that falls to the ground, he just snatches it up. So it's kind of helpful. Those, for those of you who are at home or are watching Kitchen Party, remember you can use the hashtag on Twitter, Kitchen Party, or you can follow us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Um, today's <laughs> guest is Alejandra, and is it Ramos or? Ramos. It's Ramos. Ramos. Um, but, Ramos. Yeah, Ramos. <laughs> Gotta roll that R. Get Where is that R from? Um, well, it's it's pretty much just like a Spanish last name. My family's from Puerto Rico, but they're I mean they're Ramos is all over the world. I was actually just in Mexico a couple of days ago, and my uh, the guy who was like driving us around, his name was also Ramos. So yeah, there's a lot of us. Now, you, your background is, is so interesting, but your website, Always Order Dessert, is completely the opposite sounding of you know, <laughs> your, your Puerto Rican background. <laughs> so, can, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your website and um, sure. how, you, how you sort of started? Uh, I mean, I, I'm a dessert person, obviously, Bakespace.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 
and then uh, and then also uh, once we're done, Alejandra, uh, Douglas, and Renee, make sure you guys introduce yourself as well for those of you who are just new tuning in. <laughs> So, yeah, so I have a food blog called alwaysorderdessert.com, and I do always order dessert. <laughs> <laughs> but I started it uh, about five years ago, and it's actually not just dessert. It's, it's sweet and savory. The idea just kind of being the, the philosophy of, you know, being the sort of person who would order dessert and just kind of saving room for the sweetness and enjoying your meal rather than just kind of rushing through it all. Um, and it's, you know, original recipes, entertaining ideas, kitchen tips, and just really anything that has to do with cooking from scratch and, and getting confident in the kitchen and just kind of having fun and enjoying the experience of, of cooking and feeding yourself and your family and friends. Um, but in terms of the food thing, I've honestly, I've I think I started cooking probably when I was a teenager, but it wasn't until I got to college that I started kind of skipping my classes and then I would just stay, I would like stay in my dorm cooking and I would just not go to class until my mom was like, why don't you go to culinary school? And I was like, I was already in college. So I decided at that point to take a year off and actually go to do a culinary program um, in Italy. And that's kind of where that sort of basis started. So even though I did come back to college and started working as an editor, I was doing the food thing on the side because it was always my first love. Where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, which is a little town about 15, 20 minutes outside of New York City. Jersey girl uh, in the house. I yeah, like that. totally. New York City. What oh, accent. cool. Very cool. <laughs> I was taught well. I was taught by a, a, a friend from Jersey, and that's what, yeah. So what accent, you know? Forget about it. It comes out every, we were actually in Jersey yesterday to take the dog to the vet, and uh, we went to, we had to drop him off at 8.30, and we went to a diner for breakfast. And I ordered coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, just, it just came out. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah, can't help it. Hey, Douglas, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, I certainly will. Uh, first of all, I do want to say, Alejandro, the brioche buns that were on the website. Ah. <clears throat> yeah, that's, mm -hmm, yeah, huh. they're, they're next in line to be made, just so you know. <laughs> If you haven't I had a chance it. to check that out, visit. Go hop over to Always Order Dessert and uh, check that out because those are <laughs> yummy. So good. Anyway, my name is Douglas C. E. Welch. I am a writer, blogger, podcaster on all sorts of things, including food, gardening, technology, careers, new media, and more. And you can find out everything about me over at DouglasEWelch.com. How conceited is that, right? Yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, is it conceited or is it just simply accurate? Well, if you want to find me, that's where you find me. You know, that's my name. Don't wear it out. But uh, that's where you can uh, find out everything about me. And now, Renee Lynch. I think it's accurate. I don't think it's conceited at all, Doug. Um, <laughs> my name is Renee Lynch. I'm a writer and editor at the LA Times. And I work across a number of food sections there, or a number of sections, including food, health, entertainment, and, uh, and news. So if you guys are tuning in, uh, this is Babette Pepeye with Bakespace.com. I'm the founder and CEO. If you want to see all of our shows and see what's on the schedule, in fact, I'm actually updating it this weekend. We have all of our shows until June lined up. I'm so excited. You can go to BakespaceTV.com. I know. I'm so happy. I cannot wait. We have J.M. Hirsch from the Associated Press. We have some maybe some celebrity chefs that are going to be a surprise. You mean uh, they, don't, they don't tune in for us? <laughs> oh. you know, well, you know, we'll, 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 we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, and then every Thursday you can find us here at Kitchen Party. Kitchen Party is always a different topic and we bring someone who we absolutely adore in food. And Alejandra and I, we met, uh, she spoke at Tech Munch. Uh, I think you spoke a couple of times, didn't you? Or just yeah. once? No, twice, twice I think, yeah. Because I did the first one was a panel and then last time it was the cooking demo. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, we hope we get Astor Center again because we want to do more cooking demos. I love that place. Yeah, Gorgeous. we may we may be moving Tech Munch New York. Uh, Tech Munch is a food blogger conference we produce in like nine cities across the country, and we do it in New York every year. This will be our fourth year in a row, and I think we're actually moving it to later in the year. So I'll keep you posted because cool, Astor Center isn't available. Um, but I also want to make sure we know our friends on Twitter and on Google know that we are. We appreciate you watching. I don't know if can you guys hear my uh, my plane. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, ride. This is the first time that I've kept my window open, and I'm like, 
Well, this will be interesting. No one will be able to hear anything. And of course, now I sound like I live in South Central LA. <laughs> I look like the crazies. No, you um, you live near the Santa Monica Airport. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so I just want to say, uh, Carlos Hernandez is. Uh, he just posted on Google Plus. He had shared our link that he's watching. Uh, Dessert Chick. Hey, Carlos. Ooh, Dessert Chick oh, is Dessert tuned chick. in. I know. Joining in late, but that's okay. Uh, uh, looking forward to spring cleaning. Rescue Baker has retweeted some stuff. Mitch Jenkins on Twitter was like, first accent in 11 minutes in. Drink up. Woo! <laughs> you know what? Jersey accent. She's totally right. That's right. I mean, to me, that's normal. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> it's still an accent. She's right. <laughs> we have this thing where it's like uh -huh. a kitchen party game. It is ridiculous. It is basically anytime anyone, usually Douglas, who talks with an accent, we all have to drink. And usually <laughs> Renee's the only one who is like, oh, that's an accent. Oh, that's an accent. And I just follow. I follow. I just keep drinking. Um, but I'm like, <laughs> that's my way of controlling the show. That's you, know, you know what's really funny? J.M. Hirsch, the Associated Press food editor, mm -hmm. sent me an email. I was like, hey, I want to confirm you May 2nd. We'll see you on Kitchen Party again. And he's like, oh, I know what wine to bring. And I was like, all right. My job is We've done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gray-haired lady on Twitter is also tuning in. And uh, Carlos Eats said, first time checking out Kitchen Party. Uh, and Welcome, then I think, I think that's it for right now. But uh, if you guys have any questions and you're watching live on YouTube, you're watching on Twitter, you're watching on Google+, wherever you're watching, we're going to try to follow the conversation as much as we can. Um, leave a question, like if you guys have anything about spring cleaning. Uh, and so this week I put out a call, I was like, hey, we need a guest, we need a guest. And some folks on our Facebook page left a message and comments and pe friends who we've worked with before. And Alejandra was like, hey, I'll do it. And I'm like, oh my god, she's adorable, let's get her, let's get her. And I was like, what can we talk about? And she's like, well, it's the second day of spring, so let's talk about <laughs> spring cleaning. And I was like, perfect, perfect, because my house, is a mess. Cleaning? What about I, as a man, I know nothing about said word. I've never heard such words before. <laughs> cleaning? Clean, spring cleaning? What is this thing? What is Douglas, this thing? Douglas, who, who in your house cleans? I admit it, I'm a horrible housekeeper. I do okay, but I, I am not, uh, for a, for a work-at-home husband, I am not the best housekeeper. But uh, I maintain a level of, of livability, let's put it that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's just you. It's you. It's you, your wife, and your son, right? Yeah. And does your son clean? Uh, he his jobs are to take the trash out each week, to unload the dishwasher and load it if I can force him to, uh, and and stuff like that. So yeah, he he has his little his little chores. Nothing like you know I had growing up or my friends had growing up more even more so you know slopping the hogs and uh, mucking out the stables. But he has a little bit he has to do. Did you just say slopping the hogs? Yeah. Because that sounds like. I don't but know where I did that's not going. Say it, but I did not <laughs> uh, slop in the hogs. You never slop the hogs? <laughs> I mean, I just yeah. want to hear a bone chicka bone bone. Brown chicken, brown cow. Um, <laughs> uh, the, slop, the slopping the hogs was the earliest form of composting. You, you scraped all the kitchen scraps into a bucket in the kitchen and then used them to feed the hogs. Okay, so uh, not where my brain was going. No, 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 I said slopping the hogs, not slapping the hogs. That would be an entirely different thing. <laughs> Renee, Renee, what about you? My, uh, I, I'm familiar with that term because my mom grew up on a farm, and when we would go to visit her family in North Carolina, we were we got to do the slopping the hogs thing, which we thought was the coolest thing in the world. We would, you know, put everything in a bucket and take it out and feed it to the hogs, and we just absolutely loved it. And my mom said, yeah, if you had to do that 365 days a year, you would not like it, but that's what you're going to do growing up. But we had so much fun with it. We were like, look, the pig is eating chicken. <laughs> we were very excited. But in our house, we try to divide um, we try to divide the chores up, and I think we do a pretty good, a pretty good job of it. For example, I do all the laundry, and then my husband takes the laundry, folds it up, and puts it away. So we have like a little, a little system. That's similar here. That's similar here. Mm -hmm. Hey, just so you guys know, uh, the Wisconsin Veg Gardener has also t chimed in. It says it's farm talk time. That's right. That's so right. Now we're going to teach you how to slop the hog. Okay. First of all. 
<laughs> I just want to send an apology before we begin and just tell you that I have, for some reason, this whole thing. I don't know what I'm doing. It's jazz hands. Everything, love it. everything, love is, it. Better jazz hands. everything yeah. is better with jazz hands. Yeah. Everything is better with jazz hands. It's. I, growing up, uh, having a theater degree, I can officially state that as part of my educational process that everything is better with jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Babette. I know. For, I don't know what's happening here, but the scotch is taking hold. And also, I just want to apologize. This is not a scotch glass. No, I'm I just terribly want to let you disappointed know. in you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went to go put my scotch in a glass and realized I had already... <laughs> dirtied all of my other glasses. So this is actually a perfect talk to tell me how I could get my act together and not <laughs> have dishes in the sink. Um, so let's 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 start with the importance of what is this spring cleaning? Like why does everyone feel the need all of a sudden where they're like, out with the old, in with the new? I mean I think it's just that that fresh feeling that you get, especially I mean especially here on the East Coast where you've been cold and kind of huddled up all winter. So you can kind of I think you can kind of get away with it because I don't know, it's just just a more forgiving time. But once spring comes around it's warm and fresh. You want to open up the windows and I think it's just it's that kind of that same January sort of feeling where you just want to start from scratch. Even if it only lasts a couple weeks, you know, <laughs> at least at least you tried. I call it the great reset. You know, it's it's a reset exactly. of you know, I having grown up back east, you know, in, in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets pretty funky. By the end of winter you're really wanting to open the windows because you oh, know yeah. you know, cooking smells collect and everything else. It's kinda like it's really a pleasure when you can when you can open up and everything off. And in the old days which includes my 1950s upbringing in the 1970s, you know, you would drag the bedding out to the clothesline and let it hang in the sun and even beat on it a little bit to get the dust out and, you know, all that typical, you know, spring cleaning stuff um, just to kind of reset you for the, for the coming spring and coming summer. Exactly. Renee, what about you? You know, I feel, I totally agree that it's just kind of a, a, a feeling that you get. And I, I grew up in New Jersey and you're just, it's too cold to bring anything outside and, and try to, uh, so we do the same thing. We bring our dog, we would bring the dog's beds outside and shake them out, you know, when it started to get warm. You can't really do that in the winter. So it's really yeah. your first opportunity to kind of take advantage of that indoor, outdoor living and going back and forth. And um, it's just, it's just a good reset time to clean out the cupboards and, and get going. Now, if only somebody could come over to my house and do it for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we have a very nice person who comes in every two weeks to reset us again because, again, I'm not the best. My wife is a very, very busy college professor now, and she ends mm -hmm. up driving a lot and stuff. So that is that is my um, oh my burden, I guess. I have to say that. I, I, I <laughs> That's why I freely admit up front I'm not the greatest at it. So And you outsource um, it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a nice way of saying it, yes. Um, it's Alejandra. I mean, one of the mm -hmm. big things that, that – does affect all of us and it's, and relates to food, of course, is the fridge. Yes. And you know we cook a lot at home, mm -hmm. um, both because we like to, and I'm actually losing weight right now, and so you know we don't eat out a lot and all this stuff. So, but things can collect up, and well, do you have a method of you know rather than cleaning, do you have a method of a rotation or anything that kind of gets you into a pattern that helps you move stuff through your fridge um, and and use stuff up mm -hmm. and, and kind of keep a flow going. Well, I mean, there's a couple of tricks because I have to admit that I'm naturally not, you know, the expert at this stuff. It's 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 more like a, you have you need these little tricks and these little tips to kind of get yourself into the routine of it. And so there are definitely a few things that I like to do. I mean, one of the best things is definitely, which is what I kind of learned when I was a kid, the idea of putting all the sort of new, fresh stuff. Like when you do the groceries and you have all the the new boxes and things, to kind of put those in the back until you finish up the old stuff. Yeah. Because you, the studies even say that you, you use or you're more likely to eat the things that you see. That's why people hide the marshmallows and the cookies <laughs> and the candy to keep them out of their, either their line of sight. And it's the same way with, with vegetables and things. If you, if you can see them, you're more likely to use them than if they're just sort of in a bag kind of hidden in the back. So I try to kind of keep rotating things, keep moving things along. The leftovers, keep them in clear containers so that you can see what's in there, which is a huge thing because if it's a sort of opaque container and you don't know what's in there, it's, it's going to be there until, you know, 
next year, next spring or New Year's, frankly. Yeah, it's it's going to be there until you discover it or it exactly. walks out under its own power. Yeah. That, yeah, and, you, you will... You will smell it before you you can even identify what it is. We've gotten we've gotten pretty good at that. I mean, one of the things I try to do too is I try to when I make a, a dish for us, we always have leftovers, of course, and you always have leftovers of the actual dish. But I'm also working on ways of of finding ways that if I make this dish, mm -hmm. I know that if I don't eat it as a just a straight leftover, what can I make from it? Exactly. And I try to develop different ways of kind of rolling the foods through so you're not feeling like you're eating the same thing again and again and again but you got some variety so we'll take leftover pasta we'll go into tomato soup for lunch we'll go you know just whatever path you can push these leftovers through the system absolutely and another trick I like to do is um, I like to keep a list on the fridge so kind of an inventory list I actually call it a reverse grocery list mm -hmm. so instead of putting up the pad and writing the things as you run out of them and need new things you can just use put them in what you have and as you're using it up you can kind of mark it off so that, that way you're kind of you know so if, if you've got for example you know two pieces of lasagna left in there you can put that there so that the next time you go in the fridge hunting for something to eat you're like oh yeah I've got that lasagna in there and you can use it cross it off uh, the same with any kind of chicken or any sort of vegetables or anything that you want to make sure you use up it's just kind of a nice little reminder. I love that Great. idea. Yeah. Never heard of that before. Very, very good. I also have the other, and the other side of it is called the guilt list, which is anytime you end up throwing something out that, like, for example, you bought a bag of carrots and you just never use it and you threw out the whole bag with the wrinkly dead carrots inside, so then you can write them down. Because if you start to notice that you're throwing out a lot of carrots every single time, maybe you should just stop buying carrots. So you're apparently not a carrot eater. So it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of a good way to kind of keep track of what it is that you do use and what it is that you don't use so that you can sort of adjust your shopping habits and you know cuz a lot of times we go to the grocery store with these great intentions of I'm going to eat so healthy this week and I'm going to buy all vegetables and lean chicken and then all the only thing you eat is eggs and bacon. So <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter how healthy the ingredients in your fridge are if they don't actually make it inside of you. Mm -hmm. What's well, hard, you know, one of the things, one of the problems we run into regularly here too is package sizes. Because if mm -hmm. you buy the small package, it actually costs you more money yes. to buy a small container of cottage cheese as opposed to a large container of cottage cheese. But it's sometimes hard to get through a large container, so it's it's a real conundrum. And I'm, I'm constantly kind of pushing my wife. It's like you know. Yeah. Don't buy the big one. I can't eat that much in a given week <laughs> with my salads. Okay, um, yeah. so it, it does it does get a little tricky when you're when you're purchasing in larger sizes. I, I keep trying to find smaller sizes that are cheaper, mm -hmm. but it's just a, na um, a, a nature of the beast that they want to charge yeah. you more for the smaller that, size. That's how I feel at Costco. I walk in and I'm like, how is this food ever going to be consumed? Like 300 containers of soup. I, but I, I guess people that's buy for them. Well, that's for a commercial. The fact is, that's for a commercial enterprise. That's for a vending machine at a school or something like that. Now, there, I mm -hmm. shop at Costco, and there, there are several staples that I buy there. Uh, yes. A lot of non-perishable stuff. Obviously, you can buy the thirty-five pack of toilet paper and put it in the <laughs> garage. It's not going to go bad. Okay, you're not. But uh, a lot of food products. Uh, it's usually my base products that I use in a lot of different foods. There's a certain. There's a cheese or a Tillamook cheese. It's very good that I like, and it's. It's a huge brick, and you look at it like, oh my god! But <laughs> over the course of three weeks, you know, we only go there probably once a month or whatever. You're going to eat through that, and so exactly. um, it is very important, though, when you're shopping at bulk places like that, to not go hog wild, as shall we yes. say, and end up with stuff you're not going to be able to eat. It's yeah, it's important to kind of keep keep an eye on what it is that you you really do use because it, yeah, you're you kind of eat with your eyes and you get so excited and don't go to the grocery store hungry because that exactly. makes you think, <laughs> <laughs> that's so dangerous. I will I tend to shop online because uh, in New York City, um, I use an online service called Fresh Direct and so I will if I notice that if I'm hungry when I do my shopping, there'll be like three hundred dollars worth of food in there. And then I go eat and then I come back and then I edit about hundred and fifty dollars out. <laughs> but um yeah, but one thing like... that we're talking about, like the yogurt and the cottage cheese, I actually do like to buy the big containers because as you said, they are much less ex uh, expensive. But I like to portion them out myself. So I get little containers. Um actually might have one around here somewhere. Oh, here. Mm -hmm. 
I just get the little tiny, like little mason jars or the little plastic ones, and I will make my own little yogurt cups. And that way I can have them set up there and I can grab them if I'm, you know, need a quick breakfast on the way out the door or if I need something for lunch. And it's kind of nice to be able to just do that. And it's already portion controlled and you don't have the big container. Yeah. But, uh, it's a little extra work, awesome but, idea. It, but it's going to save you money in the long run because you're just not going to be throwing away spoiled foods. So. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I will take one of the tricks we have too is that we have several restaurant supply stores around us that I absolutely mm -hmm. adore. Talk about a dangerous place to go though. Shopping. Oh gosh, like, yeah. Man. Oh dear, <laughs> look at it's a hundred and fifty dollar knife. Don't I need that? Um, <laughs> but uh, one of the one of the things we do there is all the food containers that are used for like. Delivery of soups, Chinese delivery, meal del You can buy them at the, at the oh, yeah. restaurant supply store. They're perfect. They're pint, quart you know, sizes, yeah. and you, mm -hmm. they, they're perfect for uh, dividing stuff up. And they're actually much more sturdily built than you would think as something that's going to be you know, thrown away or recycled. Mm -hmm. And they actually last quite well. And we discovered that because we got some, my wife always likes to get soup from the Chinese restaurant when we order Chinese. <laughs> and so we started having these containers like, dang, these really last. I'm going to go buy great. some of these specifically just for our own purposes. So yeah. that's, that's another great way of uh, portioning stuff out if you, if you need to do that. That's Absolutely. a great tip. I like that. I think I'm a real lazy cook, and so <laughs> I love that tip because I will go into the refrigerator, and if there's like a – like I'll get the prepackaged little apples. It's terrible. It's terrible for the environment. <laughs> it's like one apple for like five bucks, <laughs> and they have like the little caramel dippers. But I'm so lazy that I'll be like, oh, a bag of apples that I know that I can get through that whole bag and eat it without yeah. being overwhelmed. And I, th I think that yogurt idea, because I've been wanting to buy, I love Chobani and I love these Greek yogurts, but I am always intimidated by the large portions. I, and I have some mason jars. So I'm gonna I'm gonna totally try. I gotta tell you on Twitter, people are loving, loving, loving the reverse the uh, the the reverse shopping list. Oh, mm -hmm. cool! Loving it. It's Jenkins <laughs> and uh, Sarah nine 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 and Carlos Eats. All of them were like, you know, retweeting that. They just think that's awesome. Just Great. so just so you know, you hit a chord. And also on yeah. Google Plus, also Erica. Um, I always mess up Erica's last name. Caracas. Caracas. Uh, I always mess that. <laughs> I mess that up. So hopefully Erica Try will. Try to get back. Will me. Well, <laughs> she, hopefully she'll appreciate me just trying. But she's a sweet. She's a doll. So she was on our Tech Munch uh, show. A wonderful food blogger here in Los Angeles. Um, it has also is also tuning in on Google Plus. So we are watching your posts. Um, and remember, if you want to get into involved in the conversation, you have a question. Use on Twitter. Use the hashtag Kitchen Party. Or and also um, uh, you can use Alejandra's uh, Twitter handle in case something happens and you're watching this later on and you have a question for her. Her Twitter handle is at Nandita N A N D I T A. So you can always tweet her. 24-7, 365, <laughs> five years from now when you're, like, stumbling upon this video. <laughs> you know, focused on high, high finance or something like that, working at Juan Wall Street or something. She'll get these food, food Twitters and emails. People oh, will be like, like what are <laughs> tweets? What are tweets? <laughs> yeah, what are those things called tweets? Yes, exactly. <laughs> So you know, you I mentioned you got you sent me some bullet points um, mm -hmm. uh, talking about getting organized, and you started talking a little bit about donating to food pantries. You mentioned, and also um, you said search. I think this was kind of interesting. Search blogs, taste spotting for ingredients and spices, and find new ways to use them. Yeah, that's cool. Can you can you elaborate on that Absolutely. a little bit? Absolutely. So. Um, I feel like a lot of us have a lot of ingredients that we buy. Maybe we had there was one recipe that called for 11 ingredients, and we bought all 11 of them, used a teaspoon of each, and then never touched them again. Or, you know, you saw a bag of farro or quinoa or something that sounded interesting to you, and you bought it, but again, never got around to using it. So it's sitting in the back of the pantry. So every so often, I like to I call it shop the pantry and just kind of get in there and sort of, you know, pull out the stuff I haven't used, pull out the stuff I kind of forgot about and then either come up with ideas for using it or just getting online. And so going, I love taste spotting. It's a great place to search for things because you can just type in the ingredients. So you can put in farro or quinoa and see what comes up and see what catches your eye. It's a kind of great way to force you to use ingredients that you already have without even having to go to the grocery store. You're saving money, you're using what you already have. And then the other side of that is sometimes you're just not going to use it. 
you know, or maybe you you got a big bag of it and you didn't like it. Um, so I, if if it's still sealed and if it's non-perishable, a lot of these things can be donated to a food pantry. Sometimes even just your your church will collect food if they're bringing it to to a family or if they're doing events in their own kitchen. Um, and then also just even just a friend or neighbor. Like I, you know, I might have a friend who would you might have a friend who would use that ingredient and who might like to play around with it, and you can just you know, donate it to them. So it's just nice to not let it go to waste. And you know, it's the same with clothing where you kind of feel bad. You're like, oh, but I spent so much money on this. But if you're never gonna wear it, it's not gonna you know you're not gonna earn that money back just leaving it in the closet. You're not gonna earn the money earn the money back just leaving it in the pantry. So try to breathe a little life into that ingredient somehow. That happened to me when I started, when I finally got a handle on making a curry that I would like. I'm a real fussy eater. Everyone who's watched the show knows that. No, I'm, no, I'm, really? I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a meat and tater boy from the country. Um, there you go, Renee. Uh, you're welcome. I missed it. Um, uh, but yeah, once I figured, once I kind of found a way into curries that we'd like, it's like, ooh, you know, that, that roast potato, that could, you know, you could do that with garam masala and curry powder too, and and you could yeah. you could use it on this, and that's like, like, until the family's like, okay, enough, we get the point, you know, <laughs> it's okay, but move on. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. I um, uh, Alejandro, those suggestions are are terrific. I um I hate having stuff buying stuff for a recipe and then having leftovers that you kind of think you're not going to get around to, to use anymore. So I've been trying to yes. um, shop for spices at places that will allow you to just buy small amounts where you can just buy stuff in like a little baggie. Uh, if you're in Absolutely. Southern California, Sprouts lets you do that. Uh, I think the local Whole Foods lets you do that. Lazy Acres, Bristol Farms, they allow you to buy spices almost in little bins. So you don't have to buy, you know, um, two cups of some exotic or, or four <laughs> cups of some exotic rice when you just need, you know, one, uh, one cup. So Shall I think shelling that out also the 25, helps exactly. yeah. Right. Sh shelling yeah. out the $25 for saffron. Exactly. <laughs> you know, Jeez, dear, are we going to use, how much saffron do you buy? Three strands, you know. Um, but yeah, we, we make risotto milanese and then so, you know, saffron. Oh, accent. Uh. Drink, 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 drink. Okay. Um, there, are, there are spice shops too that that allow you to, uh, and will sell you actual nice containers to store your spices in, airtight metal containers to store your spices yes. in. Which uh, you, you, with those shops, and I keep looking for the Marinella, and I know there are a couple, but mm -hmm. uh, you're you're going to get a fresher pr product. You're going to be able to buy in smaller quantities. Sure and store them yourself. So mm -hmm. I find though that myself, if a recipe calls for too many odd things that I don't have in my pantry, I'm probably not going to skip it. it. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's too much. It, it goes too far. Um, mm -hmm. With the curry, I knew I could, you know, I basically saw what I could get. And, you know, I'm sort of now wanting to experience with making my own curry spice blend. Oh, yeah. Um, That's a great idea. Because because curry spices can be rather expensive themselves, uh, pre pre made, um, and so that's something I'm looking into next. I've already switched over to using uh, my own blends for for taco meat and 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 taco sauces and stuff like that. I don't buy any of those little pouches and or anything. I just yeah. make them up at home, and uh, I find it's it's so much better if you can do that. And and it, it cuts down on the waste, cuts down on the storage in your cupboards, and, and to bring it back to the cleaning element, you know, to keeping things moving through your kitchen. Um, Spices will always be better if you use them up. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of those packages have too much salt too. That's oh. my biggest downfall. Yeah. Oh, I have trouble yeah. with my blood pressure already. I don't need yeah. to be putting eight hundred milligrams of sodium in my face. <laughs> I wake up and I look like my mother. I have like the lines, and I'm like, "What happened to me?" Yeah. Yeah. Sodium is a is a really big issue. Um, yeah. Salt. You just get I mean, more control. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice to be able to make your own blends, like your taco blend or mm -hmm. or something like that. And I oh, love the idea of a so curry blend. Easy. It's so easy. Yeah. It really is. You know what was really cool? Um, we had a member on Bake Space who made a cheesecake that had a pomegranate glaze topping with like pomegranates on top. And her crust needed certain spices. And when I went to go visit her, I was like, oh my God, I have to have this recipe. And she's like, look, it's going to be very expensive when you actually try to make all the, the things. So let me pre-mix all of the spices you'll need for, for oh, the actual cool. crust. And she gave me this little baggie. <laughs> I felt like I was like a drug dealer. I was like, 
I was like, I'm coming for my spices. <laughs> Come on, man. Give me some curry powder, man. Hook me up. It was your gift idea. Yeah, no, no, that was really awesome. I love the whole, like, uh, food in jars, too, kind of stuff. Oh, where, yeah. Like, you can just, like, oh, pour it in and... Then... Actually, that would be a good uh, holiday gift or birthday present or whatever to buy in bulk that you can mm -hmm, right. basically do the pre-mixing for everyone. Now, um, do you have any ideas, since we're still talking about a little bit about the fridge before we move on to the pantry, do you want to talk about uh, or do you have any tips for refrigeration cleaning or anything like that or any kind of, I don't know. Because <laughs> my refrigerator is disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you really just have to get in there every so often, and I don't even do it as often as I should. Um, I find a pressure I... washer works. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's good to get in there at least. I mean, and I like to do everything on grocery day. So, like, that would be the day before going to the grocery store because you get it all nice and clean, and then when you come back with all the new stuff, it's just, oh, like magic. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I just kind of get in there with, with a hot sponge a lot of times. And vinegar is really great for cleaning out things. Lemon juice is great for kind of getting out some of the strange, funky smells in there. I will get in there with, like, um, lemon juice and baking soda. So you know the you know how you keep the, jar, the container of baking soda in the fridge mm -hmm. to absorb the smells? So then before throwing out, I will just use that same baking soda for cleaning. Just kind of dump it in there with the lime Ooh. and just kind of use it to scrub that first layer of filth off and then rinse that all out. So then it, it kind of gets a little double duty. Okay, I'm going like to ask a totally stupid question that sure. hopefully I'm not the only person who's ever questioned this in the history <laughs> of the world. How long do you keep that baking soda in the fridge? Like, I keep it forever. Like, <laughs> like, like I moved in, and it's still in there. <laughs> I think Arm and Hammer says you should replace it once a month. But then again, yeah. that's going to put more money into their bank account. So I tend to, I tend to do about three, and yeah, I, I give it a shake, like, in, in like every so often. So I give it a little shake to sort of put the, the stuff from the bottom on the top to kind of, I don't know, freshen up. I don't know if that actually does anything, but that's, that's my method. Now I know why it doesn't work. <laughs> For like 10 years. <laughs> the baking soda is now yeah. growing stuff itself in the fridge. Uh, and do, so. not, do not ever use the, the smell absorbing baking soda to also cook with. Oh. Like, do, do, you need two separate containers. <laughs> because be I know some, people have done it. <laughs> that would be some funky baked goods. That's oh, yeah. what that would be. Yeah, that's, you like... Uh, I think I've made that mistake as well. <laughs> that was like the, that, that's very much like the type time my wife mixed up some flour and bread crumbing, uh, uh, spiced some flour for uh, dredging chicken or something, and didn't use it, and then simply didn't think about it and dumped it back into the Bisquick box. <laughs> and I made pancakes a couple of days later and went, "Why do these taste so hot?" <laughs> They're like steamed pancakes. What is, I don't know what you call the Indian pancakes, but uh, they sort of. Kick. Yeah, yeah, they sort of came out a little odd there. It's like inventing a whole new recipe. <laughs> yeah, hey, accident. Sometimes accidents work. Some, Absolutely. I, mean, I made I made a great little thing in the day. I, here's here. It, it kind of ties in with this because it's a way of using up leftover bananas. You know what most mm -hmm. people do? They make banana bread, right? That's mm -hmm. the typical thing. Uh, I found a little recipe um, again because of the weight loss thing, and I'm just avoiding flour because my God, there's a lot of calories in flour. Yeah. Um, uh, zip up in your food processor uh, two bananas and an egg and basically mm -hmm. it makes a pancake batter and you can actually fry them up on a griddle and one time it worked really well I think I think I didn't uh, process them too far I think the second time I went too far with it uh -huh. the first time they actually came out like little you know they oh, were wow. moist inside but they were actually nice little banana very flavorful banana pancakes that sounds um, so good so i'm always looking for tricks like that of the tricks yeah. of say oh my gosh you know oh look we have some sprouting potatoes in the pantry what do we do well <laughs> I, again putting the gardening hat on i have a whole <laughs> row of potatoes in my garden right now that came from the yeah. pantry uh and you can do it it's, it's really easy to do so yeah anything that helps people use use up stuff like that i had a question for you Alejandro. you mentioned uh -huh. Clear containers and your and the containers you use. What yes. you use basically you use the mason jars. Is that one of your favorite things? Little jelly jars or, or I jars? well I use for the small portions. I love these little tiny jars. I think they're so great. But um, when I'm storing, because I do. That's actually you know we'll just 
transition over to the pantry. I actually love to stock my pantry with uh, clear and glass containers. So I do, I mean, plastic and, uh, and glass containers, just because it's so much better than the, you know, the paper or the cardboard box that the stuff's going to come in. It's always going to last much longer if you transfer it. And again, it's something that you can see. So I pulled, brought a little example of what I have in my pantry. Okay, let's see. So, Ooh. so these oh. are I, I know, <laughs> gorgeous. Look, so I have tons of these. Okay, she's just too darn organized. This is not the right show for her. That's for us. Sure. They're, they're labeled, so this is rice. Um, but it's great because they're stackable, which is really yeah. nice because it makes it much easier to organize your pantry and to fit more in there because, you know, bags and boxes aren't really stackable. They tend to fall over. <laughs> and so I love these things. And it's also great because then you can see, you know, you can see just how much you have. You can see if you need to buy more. And... It also keeps out little critters. It keeps out, you know, moisture, depending on where you know where you are. Moisture can be a huge thing, and it uh, it helps stuff last longer, and it helps you kind of save money, basically. Doesn't pick up smells mm -hmm. from other things in the pantry with it. Exactly. Uh, I know one entire shelf of our pantry is pasta. Mm -hmm. My wife is Sicilian, so of course uh -huh. there is always pasta in the house of all shapes and sizes. That uh -huh. is the. That's like venturing into the Amazon. <laughs> you want to look for something. As I would so love to have these nice little stackable containers. Because uh -huh. The bags are flopping out and end up on my feet, or the boxes topple <laughs> over, and the spaghetti comes, you know, it's like, it's, oh, please. Yeah, it's a disaster. Uh, it, where do you get those containers from, Alejandra? So these are actually from the container store. <laughs> <laughs> but these, um, I think I'm trying to look for the, the brand. Oh, these are DKW. I don't know what that company is, but you can look for them. I know they make them with the blue tops and yellow tops also. I mean, um, I think the, the, the trick is they're clear. You can yeah, see what's clear. inside, exactly. and you can see how much is inside. Yeah. Um, we've actually yeah. switched over that for cereal. Um, oh, yeah. We yeah, have us several too. cereal box-shaped containers like that, which are clear, and because you always end up with little tail ends of bags and all this stuff, it's yeah. like, no, just just put it in there, and then it stays nice, and it's easy to access, and, you know, the, exactly. and they fit, per, they're the same shape, because, you know, we'll buy the big box sometimes oh, of yeah. cornflakes, you know, it's like, <laughs> well, that doesn't fit on the shelf, okay? No. <laughs> so, you, so you need to break it up just to get it into the, into the these, are, these are the shelves in the kitchen themselves. We have a, a full kind of closet-shaped pantry that the previous owners put in in the hallway. Oh. Uh, why in the hallway? Hey. I don't know, but it, it's useful, it's functional. But uh, the big boxes go in there, and then we bring from there to the kitchen to fill these other containers. So, Hey, guys, on Twitter, we got Dessert Chick mentioned, which I want to make sure we give props to her. She said, I believe there was an accent in that spice story. So, oh, Dessert God. Chick, we are drinking to you. In your honor, yes. Cheers. Here, Thank here. you. And then we also have Carlos Eats. He also retweeted that because he was like, I want to make sure they see that. We are, then, we are Mitch, such enablers. <laughs> and then Mitch, enablers. Jenkins, Mitch Jenkins says, don't use the smelly baking soda to cook. Also, don't drink the plunk. What is that? The plunk? The plunk. Yes. P-L-O-N-K? Yeah, what is Plunk that? Plunk is a name for cheap wine. It's a British term for cheap wine. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I've never followed that rule. <laughs> and then we also, um, Dessert Chick says, I stick bananas in the freezer when they get really ripe and then grab them when I want to make banana bread or smoothies. We do the same thing with smoothies yeah. as well. Ooh, great idea. Um, and then the uh, Wisconsin Veggie Gardener on Twitter, the WI Veg Gardener, says, uh, mm -hmm. we keep dry goods in mason jars with airtight lids are out of oh, uh, airtight lids keep out and let us oh shoot the thing just the thing keeps just out. moved on me the thing just moved out on me. and lets us see how, <laughs> lets you see how much you have flowers yes here, so. yes you know i just right. saw actually oh also dessert chick says that ikea has clear containers for your pantry as well you know i just saw something about who i don't know who posted if it was martha stewart or somebody or chow.com somebody posted recently you may have seen it on google plus where they're keeping their salad in a mason jar? Did oh, anyone yeah. see that? Yes, yeah. I've seen that. That's a, a newer, newer trend now. Um, that's actually on. That's that's a perfect question for Alejandra. Yeah. Because I'm eating a 
bunch of greens lately, and mm. more than I've ever eaten in my life, which actually helps because things don't go bad as quickly because I simply eat them up. Yeah. I, I can now make a salad, and tonight, my, my dinner tonight is going to be a salad, and I will probably use two small heads of, kind of artisanal-style lettuce, at least in my mm. salad. Um, but um, what I've always found is if, if any of the salad is touching the sides of a bag or a bowl that has moisture on it, man, it just goes so quickly. Yeah. Um, wh any tricks to help you with that? Um, so my favorite trick for keeping, because it's, yeah, it's moisture. So you want to get rid of the moisture. You want something that, that traps it. So uh, just a sheet of paper towel put That's in with, yeah, that, yeah, either, yeah, you can just put it in, in the box right on the bottom and then put the stuff right back on top or in a bag. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's honestly, it's something you have to kind of use quickly. I mean, there's only a limit as to how long you can keep it, but the paper towel really does help a lot. Also having, making sure there's like some sort of preparations in either the bag that you use or, the, so don't put it like in a sealed Ziploc bag or uh, the container, but it, so it, there needs to be a, a flow of, um, of air so that, that moisture doesn't get trapped in there. I found I finally went out and bought, because I'm eating so much greens now, I actually went out and bought a, an honest to God, OXO uh -huh. salad spinner. And, oh, uh, yeah. you know, which is a huge device to try and just find a place for in it's, your kitchen. It's, I know. <laughs> but it does a great job. And actually, you can store in that for a short time, like a day uh -huh. or two, because the basket keeps any moisture, allows the moisture to roll off yes. into the bowl, keeps the moisture off. It's not touching the leaves, basically. Exactly. And so that's helped yeah. a lot in our realm, too. Um, it's 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 tricky though greens mm -hmm. i mean it's it goes to that american lifestyle too of we have big fridges we yes. have we go out and buy large amounts of food at one time I, visiting the italian relatives is always so striking because they have a fridge that's you know it's not a dorm fridge but it's probably two dorm fridges in size so tiny yeah and yeah. and you know and they shop every day exactly you know, we, we stop on the way back from where we're going out to get bread we mm -hmm. stop and get cheese and meat at the at the Forte store, you know, whatever. That's why they never work. That's why the Italians are always, <laughs> it's like things take four months long because they're all shopping for their bread. <laughs> you know, what's funny is how much they do work, how much the American business influence has gotten in there uh, because, um, you know, they'll, they, they take a long lunch, but they, even now they only get an hour for lunch. That's yeah. still typical with them. Um, but uh, they'll, they'll sometimes work until seven or eight at night because if they have a bigger break in the middle of the day. So it all balances it out. out. Renee, well, are you my, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, yeah, no, I was just going to say about the, the tiny fridge. One of, my, uh, one of my best friends lives in Scotland, and we were over there visiting her, and it was, they had just gotten married, so we we'd, some of them came, gave them a, a magnum of champagne that we, <laughs> that we ended up opening up one night, but then we had some left over, so we were going to put it back in, and it didn't fit in the fridge. We had to take all the shelves out to, so that the magnum would actually fit in the fridge because the, the fridge was like this big, and we had like to put the magnum in on sort of on its side. So that's how much smaller those, uh, those um, European Americans refrigerators who have, are. Yeah, Americans who have not traveled, they don't really understand that that kind of concept of buying buying your perishables every day or every other day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and you really need to do that, especially if you eat more veg. If you, if you're doing that type of thing, you, you really there's no way of getting around exactly. going out and getting your veg on mm -hmm. probably an every other day basis on the way home from work or at lunchtime or whatever because it, it's simply not going to store well in the fridge. Yeah. You can also do heartier ingredients. I mean, you can instead of getting the more delicate lettuces, something like kale is going to last you a lot longer. Kale will last or, longer. Yeah. We yeah, I eat so a lot of kale. It's one of the few greens I like, and so yeah. we eat a lot of kale too. Spinach, uh, we found ways of keeping exactly. you know, leaf spinach a little little longer, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it does. It is a bit of a trick. You kind of and, yes. and, and sometimes you're like, "What are we having for dinner? We're having for dinner what's about to go bad." Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. It's, oh, it has not gone bad. It is simply we need to eat this now or we're <laughs> And there's, yeah. there's nothing wrong with thinking that way sometimes of, of, of letting that guide your decisions too or for, or for what you're going to have for dinner. Hey, Renee, have you been getting a lot of pitches at the LA Times of like food waste or spring cleaning in the kitchen? Have you been getting anything like that? There's been some spring cleaning stuff. Um, I think food waste has been something that's been kind of uh, uh, it, it's been something out there maybe for like six months or so, which I which I'm so glad to hear because I think anything you can do to raise awareness about how much stuff we actually end up throwing out um, is great. But yeah, it's definitely it's definitely out there. It's that time of the year. 
Yeah. Have you heard of any bad pitches, like crazy things where you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> you have to you save know, the company. <laughs> I'm getting what I'm really getting in terms of pitches right now. People are pitching stuff that's healthy, but you just you look at it and you read it and you're like, this is not healthy food at all. But yeah. they come up with like buzzwords to try to convince you that something is healthy and they want us to write about it. And I got the perfect one. Just go in the garbage. Organic Oreos. <laughs> That's a perfect <laughs> example. A perfect yeah. example. Organic Oreos. Exactly. I'm like, hey, by the way, I'm going to the uh, the hockey game tonight. I'm going to be eating a lot of bad food. I just want to let you know. Watch the screen. I will be posting it. You guys are while well, while Douglas is eating his salad, I will be munching on some delicious food. So bacon sure. wrap, bacon wrap, hot dogs, and. I'm a vegetarian. Tropical. tropical right. Oh, that's true. I always forget that. I can't. I don't. I don't understand that. I have. I have no concept of this vegetarianism. <laughs> like, makes you, see these teeth? These teeth are made for ripping flesh. I'm, <laughs> that's, that's just where I go. You know. So, what are you going to have at the hockey game? Vegetarian. Uh, pardon me while I totally derail the conversation. Yeah, we're we're, we're, but, gonna, we're gonna have something. I don't know. I have to see. I'll I'll, I'll tweet it in the kitchen party hashtag. I'll oh, be like, look what I'm you're eating. You're gonna have to because because I don't know what you're gonna eat. That that's like a, a meat eaters festival at a hockey game. <laughs> <laughs> we also have like row like five. Oh, oh that's okay. So great. just to tell you, okay, this. Is not fast enough to stop a puck. Okay, just oh. so you know, <laughs> if a puck is coming at your head, this? it's going to hit you. <laughs> the jazz hands jazz might jazz scare hands. it off. The jazz hands might scare it off. I will give you that. I'll just go. Um, <laughs> so we, we digress a little bit. So, you know, I want to get back to grocery day prep cook. Oh, yes. So that's my all time favorite tip. Um, so chefs in professional kitchens who turn out amazing dishes a billion times a day have prep cooks whose sole job it is to chop their carrots and onions and do that stuff for them. I married we, my sous chef. Yes. <laughs> we unfortunately do not have these people in our kitchens. So I kind of I advocate being your own prep cook, and it's being a grocery day prep cook. So the day you get home with the groceries, or in my case, the day Fresh Direct arrives with my groceries, I immediately kind of get in there and break stuff down. So your carrots, you want to chop them up. Those onions, not all of them, but maybe two or three, chop them up. Put them in containers, um, things like celery, mushrooms, any kind of cumbersome vegetables like butternut squash or watermelon, stuff that you know that... It's, it can be kind of cumbersome when you come home in the middle of the week and you're exhausted and you just want to eat. <laughs> I know, exactly. You don't, want to, you don't want to sit there breaking down like a huge squash. Honey, so, why, is there, why is half the fridge filled with a watermelon? <laughs> can you do something with that, please? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that happens in my kitchen. when My husband is a big watermelon fan, so we for most of the summer, there's just a watermelon shelf. Um, it just takes up all the room. Yeah. I, can you imagine what happens in Europe where it would just be like an entire refrigerator full of watermelon? <laughs> <laughs> now also, also remember, the three of us are in Los Angeles and you're in uh -huh. New York City. So you have to, like, you don't have a car that can go yeah. pick up your groceries and bring them back. So that exactly. experience is probably very different. We, oh, can, yeah. we can fill up our entire car bring it right to the door. <laughs> no, no, no. That's why I pay the $7 delivery charge to have the guy bring the stuff up to my apartment. Cause I'm, yeah, he has to carry up the stairs and stuff. But, um, but it really does make a difference. If you take you know, those 30, 40 minutes to just kind of get in there and chop stuff up a little bit, because then throughout the, I mean, you might, you know, it might feel like a little bit too much, but then during the week, it's going to be such a breeze because you just scoop out the onions. If you have, um, if you buy big family packs of chicken, you can break them up into a couple baggies with different marinades, and it just goes right into the skillet. And in you know, ten minutes, you've got dinner on the table. You don't have to clean up the sticky onion papers, um, and you're much more likely to eat and use those ingredients. So you're saving money. You're going to be eating healthier. You're not going to have the rutabaga sprouting in the back of the fridge because you just never want wanted to get around to feeling R it. Rutabaga is one of those words that's just inherently funny. Rutabaga. Is that an accent? Is that an accent? That's an accent uh, in my book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know if there's anyone, I saw one the other day, I, I don't know if there's anyone who could even identify a rutabaga in a lineup. You know, they might <laughs> might get a beat, they might Aren't get a parsnip. Aren't they pink? No, I will no. actually, I will no, actually not. show you, this is what happens when I don't take my own advice. 
Ah, look at there. Rutabaga. This is a sprouting rutabaga. Ooh, get that in the ground. Yeah. Have some, have some rutabagas like, there. In, the in what? Grounds. We don't have grounds. <laughs> you get a five-gallon bucket, and you fill it with sand, <laughs> and you push that puppy in there, and you'll, you'll get more. I don't know. You know. It's, Put um, it out on the fire escape. <laughs> I'm sure somewhere on the high line, you could go over to the high line and find one of those beds. And <laughs> just plant it in there, right? And then go back and... They'd never notice. They'd never You're going to read a news story about like a food blogger getting arrested in Central Park for burying sprouted rutabaga. <laughs> kimchi, you know, they're out there burying kimchi jars in in Central yeah. Park, you know, to yeah. <laughs> so, so trigger some police alert, you know, terrorism alert. Because it's, it's burying jars in the ground. Oh my god. Um, how long do you do those products? I mean, how so that basically, if you bring that home, you, I assume that you know, like chopped carrot, chopped onions and stuff is going to be about a week. You may be going to get yeah. out of that. So you sort of have to have some menu planning a little bit ahead. Exactly. Yes, but you're. I, I find that you're just much more likely to use it. You're mm -hmm. if, if it's already chopped up there, it's already to go. You're much more likely to actually toss it into stuff. Um, yeah. So I. I don't. You know. I find that it's much less of a concern when I do that. How long it lasts because I use it. Whereas if I just have it in the bag, then I just keep kind of pushing it off until the next day. I'm like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So this way you can kind of just get it out there and, you know, use it. Eat healthier. Save money. Any, sug uh, go ahead, Renee. Any suggestions for uh, for cleaning out the shelves? I keep it just seems like such a big daunting job, and I know I need to do it and take your advice for bringing stuff to the food pantry. But I just look yeah. at it and I just go, oh. I just I just buy a new fridge. That's, <laughs> that's what I do. I just got I keep thinking if I start at one end of the kitchen and just do like one or two shelves at a time and like sweep across the kitchen, it'll be okay. But I doubt I'll ever get that done. I tend to do, I mean, it obviously depends on the size of your kitchen and stuff. I'm in New York, so that does make it easier <laughs> because everything's small. Um, but I just, I need a big burst of energy. So it's kind of one of those, and I do that here. Like to my husband, I'll be like, tomorrow's cleanup day. And it's just like, you kind of like psych yourself out. And you really, I mean, like, and I get up early and I'm all raring to go and I'm playing music. So it's, you just have to make it this, you know, you have to psych yourself out for it um, and barrel through. And I will do, I mean, I'll do like fridge one day. I will do the pantry, you know, maybe like the pantry on the right one day and the pantry on the left the other day um, and just kind of work through it. And it's so satisfying. I, I confess that after it's, it's done, I will stand there and just kind of gaze up at my cabinet and just admire the beauty. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> I feel so worthless. <laughs> you know, I when I start cleaning, I start with the bathroom because it's the smallest room in the entire house, and it's the one that I can like. I don't have to try to like prevent anything from being broken or be. It's nothing's fragile, and if I can clean that, then all of a sudden I have like a a momentum where I'm like, I can do this. And then if Eric comes over and he's like, Hey, let's go out. We'll go to dinner, or whatever. And if I'm in my cleaning mode, I'm like. Leave me alone. Let me clean. Yeah. <laughs> this only happens once a year. <laughs> Watch yeah. out. Ride the momentum. <laughs> yes. My, my wife gets, gets nesting, gets in the nesting mode at the end of every semester. Mm -hmm. She's a college professor. And so at the, when she finally has time, it's like things start moving around me. I'm kind of at the center of this <laughs> hurricane. Sometimes like, if I just sit really still, <laughs> I won't get hurt. You know, but if things start going out the back door and, and out of the fridge and like you go to get some milk for your coffee and there is no fridge. It's like, dear, there's a big empty white box in the kitchen. Um, can it, did that go somewhere? I just asking. But yeah, it, it, it is. It is momentum is important. You have to, and that's yeah. true with with cooking as well. It's true with anything to do with with food or kind of life. It's if you can get that first step. They the uh, the exercise people call it putting the clothes on. If you put your exercise clothes on, you'll probably go exercise. But if you don't, <laughs> it's really <laughs> hard. So uh, it, just just getting moving and getting started in that that area is definitely a great way of doing it. Um, what you mentioned onions? I heard that you prepped mm -hmm. for the grocery. I'm, I'm actually now. I'm excuse me. I'm pulling personal advice here. So, <laughs> so onions. Uh, wait, carrot, celery. Excuse um, me. Yeah, it's part of me. Can you can you illuminate further on this? Yeah. Um, but because uh, yeah, definitely because there are days. I mean, I use a food processor a lot, and there are days I want to come home and make something. I don't mind making, and I don't mind cooking, but I don't the prepping can get to be a little bit of a pain. Yeah. 
um, because yeah, as you said, the, the onion skins. What is it about onion skins that get oh, everywhere? They're the worst. <laughs> they stick to the cutting boards, and um, I mean, it's just horrible. And it, 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 it's you know, you wouldn't think that would be a big concern, but yeah. you know, you, you and of course, when you're again, you don't have a sous chef, so you don't have your little mise en place, you know, your little exactly. perfectly laid out station to prepare your dish from. Yeah. You're like pushing stuff back on the counter and. <laughs> Stashing this on top of the coffee pot. And, I mean, that tell sounds me, like my kitchen when exactly. I'm cooking. I have a nineteen. I have a 1943 kitchen that has one door boarded up, so it is a. It's like you go in there. There is no way out. Um, and it, it it it's been remodeled several times, poorly. Um, so I feel I I feel your New Yorker kitchen pain yeah. with this nineteen you know post well mid World War II house that I have. Oh gosh, yeah. It's well. Actually, what's funny is when I talk about my pantries, my pantry are actually two. I have it's a it's a pre-war apartment, and so it's very very high ceiling. And so there, our pantries are just cabinets that go all the way up to the ceiling, and they've got these huge deep shelves. But I can't reach, and I only reach the bottom one. So whenever I'm climbing up onto the counter constantly to get stuff. Oh, yeah. That's I mean, dangerous. that's my thing. I know it's so dangerous, but I do it constantly, and I'm like, what? I'm, and I, as I'm up there, I'm like imagining myself falling and breaking my neck, and it's just horrible. The but, whole uh, year sprawled on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, but I, I mean, I do it, and it's, 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 you make it work. I keep looking into the to the uh, fully extendable sh drawers, shell drawers, mm -hmm. uh, because our pantry is deep, because um, yeah. it's just it's an ad hoc DIY thing that was added next to where the water heater is basically <laughs> uh, but yeah my wife is much shorter than I am and she can't I mean I can look into the back of the top shelf and see what's lingering in the back <laughs> back there with the gin and the scotch um, uh, but uh, it would really be helpful to have a sliding drawer that would come out fully extended mm. so you can stand next oh, to yeah. it it would also help with the lighting because you can't see any it's like a you know a cave oh gosh in there no yeah you have to get the, you need one of those um what is it the <laughs> your, my, the little yeah. miner's lamp so yeah, you're like the hmm. miner's lamp <laughs> Oh, oh, I see it. Man outfit. Uh, exactly. I don't. I don't have my hat. I have like a, everyone calls it my Indiana Jones hat. I can think. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to the pantry, Jer. If I'm not back in three weeks, send out the team. I know. <laughs> I just want to let you guys know, Cake Walker is in the house, Ooh, listening bro. and doing dishes. Hey, he oh, yeah. is doing dishes. Can Bravo. You over and, can you come over and do mine? Just yes, <laughs> please do mine too. Please do mine too. <laughs> Just hey, saying. There's we're, a business we're... right there. <laughs> Dish man. <laughs> that, would be, that would be awesome. I would I would pay for that. I would tell you know, I, I hate dishes so much that sometimes I go through phases where it's completely eco not this is like the worst thing to ever admit ever in the history of the world. <laughs> In fact, I shouldn't even admit it. It's too late. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like paper plates, paper cups, plastic silverware. I, I can't. If I look at one more dish, and in fact, one time we were in Target, and I looked at my boyfriend, and he says, "Do we need paper plates?" And I looked at him, and I was like, "Look, if you, if you make me do one more dish, I'm gonna kill myself. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself out of my misery. I'm just going to stop the world, and I, I'm not gonna look back." Yeah. So you decide. And so he you bought me all the paper plates in Target. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nope. In fact, now he like just brings them home automatically. He's like, just in case. <laughs> I was like, you are a keeper, my man. Hey, dessert chick also says I feel your pain as well. I'm in a 1926 bungalow. Uh, I don't have any pantries. Oh, you know, I'm in like an 18. I'm in the first house in our canyon. And it was when in Hollywood, it's the it's the oldest house in like the whole, almost the whole city, and uh, it's like 1870. And the plumbing was like updated in the 20s, I think. So I, <laughs> if you were I, lucky, you know, if well, you were I feel lucky. sorry for all of you. I don't feel so bad because my kitchen is ridiculously small. We should have a whole kitchen party kitchen thing where oh, we totally. actually go into each of our kitchens and are like. Who, whose kitchen is the worst? Dude, you're, you're not seeing my kitchen. <laughs> no. Oh, no, 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 no. So, B, before we before we stop the show, which will be in a, in a few more minutes, we have a few more minutes left. Um, tips for reducing waste. Uh, maybe we can get to a couple of those um, before we before we sign off. Um, and then also remember, if you're watching on Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube. Instagram? I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Get, a, get an Instagram picture. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> if you're 
if you're if you're if you're participating in the conversation or you're watching this later, first of all, subscribe to our video on YouTube. It's and Big hit that Space like and, TV. and hit that like button. It really does help. Yes, we really yeah. do appreciate it. And leave a comment. Wah, 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 wah. And then also, you know, obviously tweet us. Use use Kitchen Party, and we will find the we will find the post, and we will reply if, if you're watching this after this airs. We um, monitor the Kitchen Party tag every day, so and you, we we do a show every week. So we're yeah. someone's going to come back at we're some point. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so tips to reduce waste. Okay. So I feel like we just like brought it down to like seriousness. No, it's like, no let's, talk, <laughs> let's like get serious. Let's get up close, personal. <laughs> so these are kind of, I guess, they're sort of like my triage tips. So it's it's things that I do when you know just kind of get in there and, and deal with the dying herbs. Um, so I always have leftover parsley, cilantro. I tend to buy like three bunches at a time because I use so much of it. But invariably, you're going to get some that's sort of wilting, or you're heading out of town, you need to use it up. So I like to blitz it up in the food processor with just a little bit of water, just enough to kind of wet it, and then I put it in ice cube trays, and I make herb ice cubes. So these are awesome to drop into soups and sauces. Um, you can actually do stuff, like if you do ones that are just mint or just cilantro, you can use them in cocktails. So Ooh, not, I like that. Not just for cooking. And I'll spoil the whole idea. You can actually buy <clears throat> frozen cubes of herbs at uh, your local Trader Joe's here in Los Angeles area. What? Yeah. Uh, I, I have kept them in the <laughs> fridge during during other times because sometimes mm -hmm. I'm having a devil of a time growing basil out here and everyone I've talked to in California seems to have trouble with it which is like kills me because we go to Sicily and the family's got you know one whole hedge of basil. <laughs> How much pesto do you want? Well you will go out and cut we will cut the back 40 of the basil and make pesto for days. Um <laughs> Uh, but that, that that is available in in stores. I've seen garlic, basil, parsley. Um, um, dried also works, of course, and drying is oh, harder yeah. in the home. Uh, the ice cube trick is excellent. It's I love that. So easy to do, and it's again one of the things you could do on your grocery prep day. Absolutely. Um, I can also make oil sometimes, so I will just again just blitz it up with oil, and then I will just use that to drizzle on salads or in marinades. I will put it on a. It's, it's actually kind of fun, just on a block of goat cheese or cream cheese, drizzle the herb oil on top and a little sprinkle of salt. Super easy appetizer or dinner. Yeah. Call it dinner. <laughs> I believe you have to watch out oil and garlic. This is a bad one. Oil and garlic, if, yeah. if left at room temperature, yeah, for yeah. a couple days in the fridge, it's fine. But without the garlic, if it's just herbs, it lasts. And keep this in the fridge, obviously. Um, but Wait, for a few days, that, if you have garlic in there, it doesn't work. I didn't. I, uh, I missed that distinction. It can breed botulism. Yes. Yeah, it's so. yeah. So if if left at room temperature, if you have so for example, if you make your own salad dressings and it has garlic in it, you should keep that refrigerated because left at room temperature, it can yeah breed botulism. Yeah. Okay, I think you guys may have saved a life today. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> you, you may have saved actually my life. <laughs> <laughs> Please send the check to Douglas E. Welch, <laughs> California. Um, so more things you can do is uh, lemon and lime. I like to squeeze them out. Again, make more ice cubes. And again, you can use those in cooking or cocktails. They're great with the mint ice cubes. <laughs> lemon, lemon drops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I also like to, before I squeeze any uh, citrus, I always zest it. Even if the recipe doesn't call for zest, I zest it, you can put it in a little plastic baggie and keep it frozen. And then you can blitz it up with sugar. It makes a great sugar for uh, for pancakes or mm. for, yeah, um, sprinkling on cakes. It adds Ooh. really good flavor. And that Love is that. one of those annoying jobs you don't want to do when you actually need it. Yeah, It slows exactly. down the entire cooking process when you're like trying, oh, look, I'm making a lemon cake. And da, da, da. Oh, now I have to stand here. Lemon. Exactly. <laughs> so you just pull the baggie out of the freezer. Love Again, it. there we are, back to back to the best. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, here, here's here's some lemon zest for you. <laughs> yeah, I love how like my my drug is like cheesecake. <laughs> That's why we love you. That's why we love you. Cupcake. Oh, also, Cake Walker said, um, "I find organic herbs seem to have a longer shelf life." Hmm. Be before they look like they need intervention. That's interesting. Do you guys I agree? I haven't I don't know. found that. I feel like it's usually it's the other way around. Yeah. 
because organics okay. have not been spoiled by the the, mm -hmm. the the nice treatment that they get. They haven't been eaten by bugs. They haven't been <laughs> yeah. So they're they're already a bit stressed because they're not getting yeah. the the extra pesticide herbicide care that normal uh, that regular food might get. So yeah, I do find with organic food, you you need to use the organic food yeah. now. Because Although it, I do find that my organic Oreos last forever. I will put in a word too. I'm one of the best ways of having fresh herbs, if you can do it, is to grow your own. I have a pot yeah. of parsley right now. We're working on the basil. We're working on the chives. I have a rosemary bush the size of a house. I eat so much so that I, I, I cannot roast enough meat in my lifetime to use all the rosemary I have. So if anybody wants them, let me know. I think there's uh, a lot of people in prison who have, who have had that same theory, though. <laughs> Gr grow your own. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I was like, I have parsley. Meat? I was like, where is this going? Parsley. Watch, <laughs> watch, watch today's video. I'm going to release my garden video. I'm uploading after the show. Watch it because I have a plant that I'm putting in my garden that I actually have to explain what the plant is because it does, it does look rather familiar to some, similar to something. Mm. But yeah, if you can grow it, even a window box, if you've got a southern exposure window, um, mm. just a little window box of fresh herbs, I find... Um, for whatever reason, I, I don't mind dried herbs, but boy, if I can put fresh herbs into something, yeah. that is that is something that really can kick stuff. And, and you use it differently than dried herbs. Dried herbs actually have a, a stronger flavor, a taste mm -hmm. to them. Um, but sometimes just that, that freshness of an herb that you've gone out, you know, I go out with scissors into the parsley and just, you know, take off a handful of parsley, chop it up, boom, it's in the, it's in the pot. And it's really something to be said for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So, okay, we talked about. I just want to make sure we we cover all of Did our we stuff. Cover the bases. Did eggs we cover in all cartons. The bases? Eggs in cartons yes. to absorb fridge to avoid absorbing fridge smells. Can you elaborate on that? Oh sure. Well, um, you know, sometimes people take the eggs out of the cartons because they sell these. Like, I know Anthropology sells these super cute egg holding trays. which are adorable. Um, but when you, that, that's, a, that's like, like the gorgeous like such a uh, unit like, If that's your problem, <laughs> I'll use Alton Brown's phrase for it. Totally, unit yeah. Yeah. But a lot of times, you know, they sell things for you know putting the eggs in or a container. My parents have one, but when you take it out of that cardboard container, it actually it absorbs smells more and it it it, um, it ages more rapidly. So if you want to keep them fresher, keep them in the container. Same goes with butter. Keep it in the paper rather than like oh, taking it out and putting it on a, on a butter dish because that's going to absorb smell so it's going to last less. Um, so those are just kind of ways of keeping the stuff a little bit fresher longer so that you can make delicious things. That's cool. That's I yeah. didn't know about about the eggs. And we, mm -hmm. we have butter all the time and I have it in, like in my little drawer that I keep like my cheese and stuff in. Um, mm -hmm. But I always have like this random piece of butter that's like folded like 500 times. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, like, I like unwrap it. I'm like, there's a little bit left. The worst is when, <laughs> when you go to make something and you're like, damn, all I have is unsalted butter. <laughs> I'm like, what do I do? And then you use it and you're like, this is the worst thing ever. Oh, but, uh, yeah. you know, I don't have a big problem on salted, salted. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? No, not really. Not really. I I tend to use unsalted for most things. Yeah, no, no, but for like when you're gonna put it like on corn or like oh, yeah. use it with some rice. You can, or whatever. You can like. always add a little bit of salt. I am not a salt person. It's like Neither I'm a. I. I, I, I like salty foods, but I I rarely add salt to anything I cook at home because the ingredients uh, I'm putting into it, if I'm using even my own stock or a stock I purchased or anything like that. It's got plenty of salt in it right out of the get-go. I, I find very little reason to add any extra salt to it at all. Oh, I'm in the salt constantly. I'm, I, I like, I do. Yeah, I have a, a just a, a keep it on my counter because salt's naturally antibacterial, so you can put your hands in it and not feel bad about it. And so I just keep it on the counter. I'm constantly pinching salt, putting in everything. Mm. So, I, I, yeah. I, I think I, I'm... In some ways, it might be a super taster on some taste or something. Cause there are certain things that can overwhelm mm -hmm. too much salt for me. I mean, literally, just just something that someone else wouldn't even really notice. I will think it's over salted, and it's not because I'm mm -hmm. not eating a lot of salt. You know, you take me to the Good Earth restaurant, which is a really really clean eating restaurant here. I can't eat the food. It's there's no salt. There's it yeah. just doesn't have any flavor for me. 
but just a little bit too much, and it's like, oh, all I taste is the salt, or like it. lettuce on a burger, oh, all I taste is the lettuce. It, it's really weird, so I think that's, that's also why I avoid it. Yeah, I'm Irish, so I like salt and salt and salt, and then <laughs> yeah. <just> more salt. <laughs> I'm with you on that, Renee. That's why you have to wash it down with the Guinness. That's just... right. I yeah. want to uh, throw out a suggestion for, uh, you mentioned butter. I buy butter when it's on sale and just fill the freezer with it. It freezes yeah. so well. I probably have 10 pounds of butter in the freezer. When I, when I do my big cookie baking at Christmas, yes, I will go buy one pound blocks of butter. Um, and cut it up myself when I need it, and mm -hmm. because when you're baking a hundred dozen cookies, you go through a lot of butter, a lot yeah, of but, butter. But that did you get any cookies for Christmas from Doug? No, no, I exactly. Didn't <laughs> 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 yeah, we see. You know, we've been doing this show for how long? Come on, Douglas, come on. But that has had my cookies. We actually did a cookie show a few. That's years ago. true, so but actually, that was like three years ago. She's had my <laughs> cookies. You're, you're and like, my Riding a wave up. that's like three years old. You gotta <laughs> update that, man. You gotta I'm, update that. I'm surfing. I'm surfing on the goodwill <laughs> of my cookies. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. Yeah. All right. So I, I want to thank everyone who's been watching the show. Alejandra, thank you so much for joining Yay. us and being a part of Kitchen Party. Now, was this your first Google Hangout ever? This was my first Google Hangout, and I loved it. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. See, now we've ruined you. <laughs> Every time you do a Google Hangout, from now on, you're going to be like, where's the wine? Where's the scotch? Where are the accents? Like, that was a little like Kitchen Party, man. Like, <laughs> geez, why was it so boring? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, we, we're so happy to have you. Obviously, Renee, Thank we're so much. happy that you joined us, uh, that Renee is like our, like our weekly comedic humor awesomeness. <laughs> Jeff, we Funny, I think of Renee as our reality check half the time. Which is That's like, true. That's true. Well, you Jeff, know, in the paper today, we actually did write about this special. I want to put a message out to Jeff, who is right now writing for the Tampa Tribune and a story that is due, I guess, tomorrow. Breaking no news. Yeah, exactly. Breaking food news. <laughs> I'm like, what, what could have been the important story? Like a meatball sandwich? What is it? Give me a break. Drinks so, with a famous chef, I think. That's yeah, the breaking exactly. News. Yeah. exactly. He found the best Cuban uh -huh. sandwich in Florida. Exactly. <laughs> and also, Douglas, also, thank you for being part of our crazy... Uh, crazy thing week after week after week after week. You can find all of us every single week here at Kitchen Party, of which is funny because none of us are in our kitchen, but that's we just forget about that. We just keep drinking. <laughs> if you keep drinking, you'll never notice. <laughs> and and Alejandra, can you tell people where they can find you just, uh, you know, if, if you want to yeah. share your, your Facebook, your Twitter, your YouTube, your Instagram, blah, 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 blah. Where can people find you? All right. So um, my blog is Always Order Dessert. Dot com. That's dessert with two S's. For some people, I always think I order <laughs> dessert. <laughs> always order dessert. Yeah, well, I was actually quoted in the New York Times the other day as always order dessert dot com. Oh, why? So, why? I know, why? <laughs> <laughs> Copy and paste, damn it. Copy and paste. And um, my Twitter is at Nandita, N A N D I T A. Here. Right there. Um, yes, and uh, Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash always order dessert. And uh, yeah, then I think that's uh, pretty much all of them. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm literally on everything. So just look up Alejandro Ramos. As it should be. Instagram. As well. yeah, in, yeah, Instagram is, I think it's Nandita2483. Pinterest is Alejandro Ramos. I'm sorry, there's no like, you know, the same. I need to just get them all on the same name, but uh, Man, but everything. Just... If, yeah, <laughs> if you go to my blog on my contact page, it's all there listed for you with plenty of links. And <laughs> always order dessert. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Alejandra. <laughs> hey, I have a question for you. Would you be sure. willing to make a like a cookbook with like a few <laughs> recipes? For like cleaning your fridge or for totally. prepping stuff, because we can put this video in that cookbook on our cookbook yeah. cafe platform. We should do that. Just and I'll, I'll build it for you. So just you send me like as many recipes as you want. Absolutely, and then yeah. I'll put really them on, it. and they'll they'll link to your profile. Um, it'll be part of your 
your area. I um, like but it. I think it'd be really cool for our members to not only see the show, but to also get some of those recipes. So Absolutely. I'm gonna, you know, I think that would be really Make fun. That happen. Yeah. Cool. Woo! Uh, Renee, and also, Renee, <laughs> Renee, did that question sound like it was going somewhere else? It's like, so Alan, would you mind coming over and cleaning out my fridge? <laughs> That's where I was going with that no. question. Right down there. Right I'll make a video there. about you cleaning out my fridge. That's right. Yeah, we'll put it on YouTube. It'll be it'll be great. It'll be cool. Hey, just so like pantry makeovers. Just, right. Oh, hey, just so you guys know, uh, Mitch Jenkins says I think that was Doug Welch's Valley Girl accent. Yeah, it was a surfer oh. dude. Come on. Geez, I am gosh. so off today, Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> I, love, I love how we're like forgetting Renee. We're like slowly drunk. Okay. She's she's not drunk until just her eyes are showing in the That's webcam. Okay. Gonna... Renee, are you going to be doing P90X after this is over? You know what? I do. I take Thursdays off. Oh, I'm is Thursday to... your Sunday? Yeah, I'm trying to buckle down and really focus on my diet because here's the thing: I have like abs of steel. I'm not exaggerating. The problem is they're under like ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to use that excuse next time. Yeah. I, could, I could give you like 300, 300 sit-ups right now, and I'm like, why am I? Why is it all blubber? So I'm trying to like buckle down on the diet. <laughs> That's no, why no, I'm I, drinking. I must diet. say, Renee, I've, I've lost 50 pounds as of today. And what? And oh, my I, goodness. Wow. I, I, I still have a belly. It's, it's just, you know, nature of the beast sometimes. So. Okay, that's yeah. totally discouraging, Douglas. That's not, that's not yeah. how... But that, well, that, I mean, what's the point? Not try. Don't do it. <laughs> you, you want to know why? You want to know a food-related reason why? It's why? because I sit here at this computer <laughs> 24 hours a day. You know, you know, I don't have the treadmill desk to work me out. You know, the elliptical, <laughs> the elliptical mouse. You know, it's not what you need. You need a, a oh, mouse that is done that. by doing the elliptical or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's you know, it's, uh, but it it can be done. Wait, actually, the girlfriend of mine is selling an elliptical thing for two hundred bucks. I almost bought it today. Two hundred dollars. Yeah, clothes hang on it really well. That's that's. What <laughs> <I'm saying. laughs> All right, guys. You know, next week we are going to have a food photographer from New York City. Woo! New York City. She's going to be joining us. Um, and I will, I'm going to be putting up the schedule on BakespaceTV.com. I'm actually going to update all of our uh, shows that are coming up until, like, June, which will be really cool so you can plan ahead and join us every Thursday. And uh, if uh, Alejandra, if there's anything that you're doing in the future, will you promise to come back to Kitchen Party to let us Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Yeah, I Woo! love that. Yeah, we okay. would love that. <laughs> cool. Awesome, guys. All right. Well, Alejandra, you, you have to bring some alcohol if you're going to come back. That's I know. True. I will prepare appropriately next time. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> and and the thing about the fridge cleaning video that's still open, right? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Hey, you guys bring me out to the West Coast. A little bit. <laughs> next next February, we'll next January. Yeah. Yes. During the blizzard, we'll, yeah. we'll say yeah. Oh my then gosh. We'll, yeah. we'll have her. She'll 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 say yes because just <laughs> to get out of the city during that time of the year. <laughs> All right, guys. We will see you later. Have a great night. See you. We'll see you next Thursday. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye.